Hi everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards. I'm really excited today to be sharing with you this fabulous project using our Clematis Flower Stamp and Die Set. We're also going to be using the brand new Flower Burst Background um, Stamp and I'm going to show you exactly how to line that up. And we're going to be using the Spring Foliage as well. As always, I've linked all of the products below. So if you'd like to shop at any of these, you can do so on chloescreativecards.co.uk. We have got so many fabulous goodies on there and of course we've got all of these brand new products on there too okay then so we're going to get started again what i've done is if you hop over onto the blog which is in the um, description below there are full instructions as to how to make this project so all the sizes for your mats and layers and everything are there too so i'm going to start off with an eight by eight card blank and i've got all my mats and layers pre-cut down so I've got a piece of our rose quartz card, I've got a piece of white card, and then I've got a smaller square of the rose quartz card. I'm going to take the smallest one first. I'm going to give it a dust with an anti-static bag. So you can just dust that over. What that's going to do is it's just going to get rid of any fingerprints or anything that may be on the card. I'm then going to take my Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad and I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm just going to bring my stamp in this is a really large stamp as well so you do need a large acrylic block for this we're going to lightly tap over the image making sure that we're getting plenty of ink onto there so this is the gorgeous new flower burst background stamp and it is absolutely gorgeous when you see this embossed all of the detail in it is so pretty and of course you've got all of the little centers of the flower bursts that are just perfect for popping your little jewels on too so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stamp this down now as this is a large stamp i do tend to find it a little bit easier if i just stand up to stamp this one i'm going to stamp the first one down here like so and you want firm even pressure all over the stamp and then we're going to lift that away I'm going to grab in some scrap paper, which I've got over here. Grab a sheet of that, fold it in half. And we're going to use some opaque, bright white, super fine embossing powder to heat this one up. So I've got a large jar of this. It's this one here from Wow. It is a fabulous colour and it's a really nice, super fine embossing powder as well. So as you can see, it's going to pick up all of the detail on that stamp going to pop this back into the jar now like so and then I'm going to heat this up with my heat gun so I'm just going to go in with my heat gun and heat this up so what we're watching for is we're waiting for that powder to go from like a, a creamy colour to a lovely bright white as soon as that heat hits it you can just see how that powder starts to melt and change so we're just going to work our way across the image like so heating this up There we go, we can see we've got that background all nicely heated now. So what we're going to do is reline up the stamp next to it so that we're then going to create a continuous background. So again, I always go in with my anti-static bars before I stamp every single time just to get rid of any fingerprints that might be on there. And then I'm going to take my clear embossing ink pad again and re-ink my stamp. So lots of tapping all over the image like so making sure that you've got plenty of ink on your stamp okay and then we're going to grab our background in i always tend to find it easier to stamp this way around and i'm going to stand up to stamp this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just hover over the image now there's no exact way to line these stamps up so all i'm doing is just hovering and just about matching it up so it's it, it's just about matched some of the little dots will be overlapped which is fine i'm gonna press that down and then we're gonna lift that off like so so you can see there can you very very faintly see 
how I've lined the stamp up there so you've got the, the two images. You will see it pop more when I pop my embossing powder over. So again, I'm going in with my opaque bright white super fine embossing powder. We're going to sprinkle that over and tap off the excess so you can see how we've then lined that up to create a continuous background. I'm going to pop this back into the jar like so and then we'll heat this up and then we've just got a tiny little section to stamp on the very end there okay so we're going to heat this up using our heat gun again so we're just holding that heat gun still and as soon as we see that powder starting to melt and change we're just going to move the heat gun over the image see how fabulous that then looks so what i'm going to do now is just stamp this very um small section at the end so i'm going to go in with my anti-static again very lightly dusting over i'm going to grab my stamp which i've got here i'm going to re-ink it using my clear embossing ink pad so again because we're embossing we're re-inking every single time because we want that lovely continuous um image going across the the background then we're going to grab in our stamp stamp it this way again and then i'm going to just again standing up really does help with this technique so i'm going to just hover and then press okay so i'm just lining the dots up like so there's no exact science to this what i would say is get the stamp a little bit closer than you maybe think in your mind and you will tend to find that that then matches up a little bit better okay so we're going to take our um, opaque bright white embossing powder again and sprinkle it over. Pop that back into the jar and then we're going to heat this up. So I'm going to grab in my heat gun. And we're just going to chase that embossing powder. There we go. If I hold that background up to show you, you can see how we've got that beautiful continuous background all over that piece of card now. So we're going to start and mat and layer our base card up. So we're going to start, I've just noticed I've missed a little bit of embossing there. I'm just going to go back in with my heat gun just to heat that up. That's a little tip that I would give you all as well. When you're heat embossing, once you've heated it, kind of just tilt your card around a little bit just to make sure that you've got it all heated. Anywhere that still looks a little bit grainy, just pop a little bit more heat onto there. Okay, so we're going to grab in our base card now and we're going to grab in that larger layer of pink. So I'm going to use a chisel tip glue pen now and I'm just going to go around the edge of my card and pop a little bit of crystallina glitter around. So this is from our Sparklicious range. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. It's just like a see-through sparkly glitter. So I'm going to go in with my chisel tip glue pen. I'm going to drag it along the edge of the card and then dunk that into the embossing powder like so. Okay, so we're just going to work around dragging this along the edge and you can see how fab that then looks okay so i'm going to take in my piece that we've just embossed as well i'm going to do exactly the same again just go around the edge and add that little bit of glitter onto here. So all I'm doing is dragging that chisel tip glue pen towards me. And this looks so pretty. I think this stamp would be lovely for Christmas as well. If you did it all in white and silver, it would look gorgeous. Okay, 
So what we're going to do now, so we're going to just start and mat and layer this all up on our base card. So we've got our 8x8 eight eight card blank here. And we're going to stick our first layer down flat. So to do that, I'm just going to use a little bit of PVA glue. So this is the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue, which is the one that I tend to use. Just going to put a little bit of glue onto the back of the card here, like so. Place that down onto our card blank. There we go. Then we're going to stick the next two layers together. So we're going to pop the smaller piece of pink that we've stamped onto some white card, and then that's going to go onto our base card. So again, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of dry clear glue. stick these two together like so and I do like to make my cards quite dimensional but obviously if you wanted to make them a little bit flatter for postage you certainly can do okay so that's that one here then what we're going to do is take our vellum a piece of vellum and all I've done is just torn along each edge and I'm going to wrap that around the middle going to fix that in place on the back just a little bit of glue there let's give that a second to grab i'm going to do exactly the same at the other side so you can see what happens with the vellum is it kind of just it's a really nice technique because it kind of just mutes the background a little bit so you can see how it's there and it's adding a little bit of texture but it's just knocking back the the background just a little bit so what we're going to do now is pop this onto our base card using some foam pads. So here we go, we'll just add some foam pads onto the back of here. And then we're going to take the backs off of these. going to get stuck onto our card blank like so okay and then what we're going to do is I've got a little um like a banner die here and I think this was a Sue Wilson die that I just had in my craft box so we're going to pop that across the middle and we're going to use this to create a sentiment so what we're going to do is take our little banner and I've got a sentiment here. This is from our happy birthday sentiment stamp set. And it says, wishing you the most wonderful birthday that's filled with all your favourite things, which I think is a lovely little sentiment to say. So I'm going to take an anti-static bag and just dust over my little um, banner there. And I'm going to take my clear embossing pad and just ink up my sentiment. And I'm going to position that down onto the little banner here. So I'm positioning it to the right side, like so. So we're going to just place that down. And we're going to lift that off, just grabbing our scrap paper again. And then we're going to take some metallic silver, super fine embossing powder. Again, this is from WOW. So this is just going to heat up and melt to a lovely sil silver, super fine finish. Okay, so you can see how that embossing powder has picked up all of the detail on that text there. So what we're going to do now is pop that back into the jar. And then we'll just heat our sentiment up. So again, just using my heat gun. I'm going to hold my heat gun still and then as soon as I see that powder change from a dull grey to a lovely bright silver, I'm just going to move it over the image. Okay, so you can see how we've got that text all nice and heated up there. So what I'm going to do now is pop some foam pads onto the back of here. And that's just going to go to the side slightly of my card. So I'm just sticking that down a little bit off centre. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to create some beautiful flowers ready to go on your project. So let me just move that background stamp out of the way because we're finished with that one now. I'm going to bring in our fabulous Clematis flower stamp and die set. Now, if you have a little look on my videos on the channel here on YouTube, you will see that I did a video showing you four different ways as to how you could make up the Clematis flower. So that it's a really nice, versatile stamp. You can do loads of different things with it. But what's really cool about these stamps is the way that we've designed them is for lining up for when you are die cutting. So you can see on the stamps, they've all got this extra little notch of polymer on one petal. And then on the dies, what we've done is we've removed a little notch of metal on one petal. And that, that's the same on all of the stamps and dies. So basically, you stamp your stamp with that little notch pointing upwards. Then you pop your die over the top and it is going to line up perfectly. Because these are hand-drawn images, they're not fully symmetrical. So there is um, like a correct way to line them up. But that makes it an absolute breeze. So what I'm going to do now is grab in some of our rose quartz pearl paper. Okay, and I'm going to stamp and emboss some of these flowers to show you exactly how we're going to use them. So for this particular project, you are going to need two of the large flowers and four of the small flowers. So what we're going to do is I've got two large and two small already done. So I'll do a large one to show you how to line these up and everything. So you're going to pop your stamps on your blocks. Okay, and I'm making sure this little notch is pointing upwards on each one. So there we go. Got those stuck onto our acrylic block. We're going to take our rose quartz pearl paper. This is our luxury pearl paper off the website as well. It is fabulous. Then we're going to take in our stamps and we're going to ink them up with the Wow Clear embossing ink pad. So you want lots and lots of tapping all over the image. Like so. I'm going to take away, There's a just. I've just got a little bit of a to run my stamp there shock horror <laughs> there we go so we're going to stamp these down stamp one here like so so again you want firm even pressure all over the stamps and we're just going to take our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder again I'm going to sprinkle that over the top that's going to go back into the jar, like so. And then what we're going to do is we need to remember that we've put that little, that we've stamped them going upwards, the little notches. So what I tend to do is just put a little arrow with a pen or a pencil next to the flowers. Then I'm going to heat it up with my heat gun. So again, you're just going to hold that heat gun still and start to move it over the image. Like so. Okay, so that's one done. I'm going to stamp one more. So again, if you're making this project at home, you are going to need to stamp four small flowers and two of the large. Okay, so I'm going to take my stamp again. I'm going to re-ink it up. I'm going to place this down onto my card and press. So again, you want firm, even pressure all over the image. Then I'm going to take in my opaque, bright white, super fine embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle this over the top and tap off the excess. It's going to go straight back into the jar. And then we're going to heat this up. I'm also going to put my little arrow there. So when we come to put these out, I know the exact way that I've lined these up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to roughly cut these round and then we'll line the dies up ready to get these um, die cut out. So, just roughly trim around the edge. I'm just using my Gemini Junior machine today, so I want to make sure that they're going to fit on the plates. So I'm going to take my dies and place them over the top. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of removable tape here as well, um, just to make sure that that's going to then hold my dies in place. Like 
and just find the end it's always a challenge isn't it it's like when you do the the wrapping up at christmas <laughs> so we're going to cut off just four little bits of tape here okay and then we're going to line these up so to line them up i'm popping my die over my stamped image okay and that's going to line up perfectly there so that's going to go there this bit of tape is going to go on there and then we're going to do exactly the same on this image at the bottom here so just lining those flowers up making sure we've got that die in the right place pop your tape on and then we're ready to run that through our die cutting machine so i'm using my gemini junior today so the plate combination that i'm going to use is my base plate my plastic shim my magnetic shim and then i'm going to put my um cutting plate on the top we're going to run that through our die cutting machine so these are thin metal dies they will fit through any of your die cutting machines be it your um like your grand caliber your big shop any of those machines at all they will fit through any that take the thin metal dies okay i'm going to take these out of the die so that's the first one perfectly die cut out i'll hold those up to show you okay and we're going to do exactly the same on the second one now so i'm going to take these off but by putting that little arrow and making sure that you always stamp those notches upwards it makes such a huge difference to um to making it so much easier for you to die cut out and to be honest as well we're going to be doing this going forward on all of the stamps and dies, the flower ones that need this for lining up because it definitely makes it so much easier um, when you when you come in to line these up. Okay, so I'm going to pop this one onto here like so. And then we're going to position that down onto here and run that through our machine. it's definitely worthwhile as well making sure that you do tape your dies well into place when you run them through your machine because what you can sometimes find is they can move in your die cutting machine so always make sure that you've got plenty of your low tack tape on there to hold them in place okay so we've got our flowers here so what you're then going to do when you've got all of your flowers die cut out is you're going to take your dries clear pva glue and you're going to take our sparklicious glitter in razzle dazzle which is a lovely kind of chunky crystalline color it's got flecks of blue in there pinks green it is really really pretty so what you're then going to do is go in with your dries clear glue and on the little dots on the ends of the petals you just want to push a little dot of PVA okay if I just hold that up to show you again and then we're going to cover that with the um the razzle dazzle glitter so we're going to go in and just sprinkle that over and then we're going to tap off the excess and then you can see look at the bling and the sparkle that you've got on there it looks so pretty doesn't it so I'm going to do exactly the same on the other one. So you do this on all of your flowers. I'm just going to do it on a couple just to show you. So you do this on your two large and your four small flowers. Okay, and then we're going to just sprinkle over our glitter again. Like so. You can see how that's then got that sparkle on there. I'm just going to pop that glitter back into the jar okay and I've got some that I've already done that are nice and dry so I've got two large and two small here okay and then what we're going to do is start to shape the flowers so what I would recommend is when you do this you I would recommend that you kind of wait for your glue to dry if possible so what I'm going to do is just hold the flower in the center and then I'm just going to curl the petals like so okay so we're just going to work around curling the petals just between our finger and thumb then what we're going to do is pull all of the petals up towards you 
like so and then place these down together so we're layering two flowers one on top of each other i'm going to fix that in the middle with some um dries clear pva we're just gonna just offset them slightly so what you're gonna do is just give them a little little twist little twist like so and then you can see how that's then created those lovely 3d flowers so i'm going to do exactly the same with my smaller ones so i'm just going to work around curling the petals between my finger and thumb i'm just going to pull those together like so and then place that down into the center so again i'm just twisting it just to offset the petals slightly oops and quite dried i'm going to do the one that i've just glittered i'm going to do this very very carefully though because obviously the glue will still be wet actually i'm going to come back to that one what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to heat emboss onto your acetate first and then i'll come back and finish making that one up but i'll just give that a little bit of time to dry so what i'm going to do now is grab in a piece of heat resistant acetate which i've got here okay and we're going to be using the spring foliage stamps so again when you're embossing onto acetate you always want to use an anti-static bag point one it's going to help you stop slipping and two it's going to take away any static that might already be on the acetate we're going to grab in the large leaf stamp from the spring foliage and you are going to need to stamp and emboss about four of these. It's completely up to you how many you want to put on. I put four on my finished project. If you want to put more on, of course you can. So what I'm now going to do is take my Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad, put an ink power stamp. So lots of tapping all over. And then when you're going to stamp down on your heat resistant acetate, you want to place it down and then just hold your stamp and press around it like so and then we're going to lift that off and you can see how we've got that image there when you're stamping onto acetate what you'll find is you don't need to put as much pressure on your stamps if you put too much pressure on what you'll tend to find is your stamp will move and you'll lose some of the detail so we're going to take that opaque bright white super fine embossing powder again and sprinkle that over any leftover of course is going straight back into the jar we're then going to take our heat gun and just heat up our image so just by holding your heat gun still you're just going to move that over your image and then you can see how you've got that nicely heated up there so when we then come to cut the foliage out all you're going to do is just take your scissors and just trim very roughly around the ends you don't have to be too careful you can leave like a little acetate border so it just means that you can um you're not going to see it when you put it on your finished project so you don't have to cut between the detail or anything like that so we're going to do about four of those and then we're going to create some of these lovely little like berry sprays and i absolutely love these so i think i've done i've done five yeah, it looks like I've done five or six. I've done six of these for the finished project. So what I'm going to do is take my little berry spray stamp and I'm just going to switch out my blocks here. It's on my acrylic block. And again, you'd stamp six of these. I'm just going to do one just to show you. So you're going to ink up your stamp and stamp it down again. This is only a small stamp, so you don't need much pressure. Just fingertip should be enough going to grab in your scrap paper pour over your opaque bright white super fine embossing powder and then we're going to heat this one up again so to do that i'm going to use my heat gun and i'm going to go straight in on that higher speed okay i'm going to roughly trim around the edge and I'm going to grab in some glitter. Now, the sparklicious glitter that I'm going to use to do this is called Unicorn Sparkle. And it's like a, got a pink and a golden tone to the glitter. But can you see how you've got flakes in here? It is absolutely gorgeous. And paired with this stamp, it just looks fabulous. So all you're going to do is go in with your dry clear PVA. You're going to put a little dot 
on the ends of each of the berries and then you're going to cover it with your unicorn sparkle glitter so you're just going to throw some of that over and then can you see how the glitter clings and it gives you this lovely effect because you've got the iridescence and the multicolour of the glitter there so once you've done those you need to leave them all to dry and now we're going to start to assemble our card so i'll make up the last little flower because that's had a little bit of time to dry so again holding in the center and just curling those petals between your finger and thumb and then on the top layer what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull the petals up towards me again just to give it a little bit more shape and dimension then we're going to pop a blob of glue into the centre and we're just going to start to build these up. So what we're going to do, we're going to just twist and offset that ever so slightly. And we're going to just press that in the centre just to get that to grab and that's created our little flower. So we're going to bring in our base card now and we're going to start to build this up. So I'm going to use some Kalal 3D glue gel to stick my flowers on with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue gel, put the big blob on the back, and I'm going to start by positioning this flower here. I'm then going to position a smaller flower above, and a smaller flower below. Okay, and because we're using that glue gel, you've got the time to kind of manoeuvre the flowers around a little bit. Then we're going to grab in our foliage. So what I'm going to do is take the ends off of these pieces to start with. I'm going to tuck one piece in at the bottom to your smaller flower. And just make sure that your smaller flower sits on top of the foliage just to kind of cover up any adhesive. I'm going to do exactly the same at the top. I'm going to tuck one under here and then I'm going to take another piece of foliage and I'm going to just start to cut into it. So I'm going to cut in about here and take that bit away there. So I'm going to go into here and this piece is then just going to tuck into there. So you can see how that's starting to come together now that we're adding the foliage on. Then we've got our lovely little berry sprays. Okay, and we've got another branch as well. So what I think I might do is add a little bit more just at the top around here. So all I'm doing is cutting out little sections away from those leafy branches. But then I'm going to tuck one in here. I'm going to tuck one down at the bottom here as well. So you can see how that's then starting to pull it all together. We've got these lovely little berry sprays that we're going to add in. So we're going to tuck this one into here. Just cutting the ends off as well, just so I can get them a little bit closer to the flowers. I'm going to tuck this one into here. So you can really see how you can just work around adding these in. Okay, and then I'm going to put another one in. I'm going to just try and tuck it underneath there, like so. I'm going to add another one at the top up here. But you can really build your foliage up and add as much or as little as you like. A little one down at the bottom I think no we're not we're gonna go in I'm gonna put one in here there we go so then you can see how we've started to build all of that up onto our finished card so what I've then got is I've got a little pearl to go into the centers of each of my flowers I think a couple of the pearls have there uh, rolled away there we go so to stick these in what I tend to do is I just tend to take some PVA glue, pop a big blob in the middle and then just drop the pearls in and just leave your card flat. And what you'll find is when that glue dries, it'll really grab the pearls and they'll be stuck in place then. 
be exactly the same at the top there. Add in your little pearls. And then these are just some little sequins that I had in my craft box. And I've just put a little jewel in the middle. What I'm going to do is just add in some of these onto the foliage and the leaves. Just to start to build all of this up. So it's starting to look really, really pretty now. And these little sequins and things are the kind of things that we all kind of collect, don't we, as well. So I've just added those in. And then what I'm going to do in the, to this flower burst background is I've got some little self-adhesive pink jewels here. And I'm just going to go in and just start to add some of these just into the background area. Okay. I didn't do this when we were doing the full background because I did that on the finished sample. And then by the time I built the card up, I kind of felt it was a waste of the jewels because you didn't necessarily see them all. So what I'm going to do is just go in now and start to add some of my little jewels onto my card like so so we'll just keep adding these in and popping these onto the background and you can see how I'm using different sizes as well the particular this particular sheet that I'm using it's got loads of different sizes of jewels on. So I'm just kind of dotting them about and using some smaller ones at the bottom of the card. Oops, where the little flower bursts are smaller. And then using some larger ones at the top. Where obviously those little flower bursts are a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to work around and do this top section now. So all I'm doing is just going in and adding these gorgeous little jewels onto our project. And you can just see how this is going to finish off all of your all of your cards. It looks so so pretty when you get this all kind of pulled together. I'm going to add a few around the flowers as well just over here just where we where we can see the little flower bursts peeking out and it's these kind of finishing touches that are really going to add that professional finish to your projects it's just going to finish them all off nicely down here just going to add a couple more just in at the bottom across here okay so you can see how that has then all started to come together and then what I've also got is some of our little rainbow jewels that we have on the website. And I'm just going to start to dot a few of these in and around. So literally all I do is I take my PVA glue. I just put little dots into the background. In and around, not too careful. And then I just take these little jewels and they're like see-through little jewels, which are great because they add sparkle but they still show the colour from underneath so they literally go with everything which is always a good investment I feel so we're just going to add in these and dot them in and around So, we went pick up here. This is my little sticky pick up pencil. I think it's got um, some uh, glitter stuck on the end or something here. Just put them on with my, my fingers there, I think. So, you can just go in and dot these around like so. And you can really go to town with these. You can put as many or as few on as you like. So we'll just dot these in. Okay. And that would then be your gorgeous finished project. So you can see we've built up all of those flowers. 
and built up all of the dimension. I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial video. We've been using the gorgeous Clematis stamp, stamp and die along with the beautiful flower burst background as well to create our backing. All of the products are linked in the description below and you can of course shop everything at chloe'screativecards.co.uk. There's also a link in the description below that'll take you to a blog post with all of the measurements and materials that you'll need to make this project. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you will come back and join me again soon and definitely subscribe to the channel because we're always posting lots and lots of inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye!